Hey cats and kittens, Ed Bud here. Into the shoe sanctuary, which I think is possibly the warmest place on earth right now. It is very warm in here. Even just doing the intro has completely worn me out, but I'll forge onwards and I'll see what I can muster. Today I have an episode of running shoe yay or nay for you, where I look at four running shoes, tell you whether I'm gonna be picking them up or not, and my reasons behind my choice. Let's get to it. Okay, so four running shoes today, the first being the Hoka Bondi X. So another new shoe from Hoka Oni Oni here. I think the Bondi has been around for about 10 years now, but they're tinkering around with it once again. This time adding a carbon plate to it, because it's kind of what you've got to do, isn't it? Do you remember that episode of Portlandia where you put a bird on it? It's kind of like that in running shoes now, but you put a carbon plate in it instead. I'm trying to figure out whether it's the Profly midsole material that they've added to the Bondi this time around. Did enjoy that within the Rocket X, not so much in the Carbon X2. If it's closer to the Rocket X material, then I might be in for this one. Otherwise, it's a big nay. The Rocket X and the Carbon X2 felt very different to me in terms of the midsole material, the underfoot feel. So who knows, maybe they tinker around with the formula or something. I don't think they're all the same. At 200 Earth credit, it's US, it's a big gamble. Aside from the Hoka Mac 4 and the Rocket X recently, I haven't really enjoyed that many Hoka shoes. I'm not sure I'm prepared to smash out 200 big ones on that. I've been enjoying the lighter and lower stack models recently in my training, and this certainly isn't one of those. Seems to have a massive cup of foam around the heel there, so I think it's more a stability model, I just don't need it. I'm sure some other shoe heads out there can put this one through its paces and give you a more meaningful review. As such, for the Hoka Only Only Bondi X, it's a big nay for me. It's definitely different stuff in this Mac 4 than there is to like the Carbon X2, for example. I think they keep it under wraps though as to the changes. And you can understand why, can't okay? you? Shoe 2. So I think back in 1993, Nike had a basketball shoe called the Prevail, but they're about to launch a new running shoe with that same name. The Nike Prevail looks like it's gonna be dropping relatively soon. I think it's out in a few areas of the world right now. Once again, we have a Zoom Air unit, this time in the bow of the shoe. And React Foam in the stern. Cushlon makes a reappearance like some strange stowaway. Maybe because it's just a bit lighter of a midsole material than that React stuff that we all keep complaining about. Well, I think React's all right. I just think it's a bit outdated now. Flywire cables around the foot make this a best of the Nike technologies that we've seen over the last few years. There's a little bit of Pegasus in there, a little touch of the Vomero, all thrown in for good measure, like a shoe broth. Perhaps a more daily version, you could say, of the Tempo Next Percent. We got a little air under the forefoot. We got React back there in the heel. Do you see where I'm coming from? No idea on weight here. There's no stats whatsoever on that. Surely it can't be heavier than the Infinity Run Flyknit 2 or the Invincible Run, right? Can it? I don't think it can. Everyone really loved Cushlon in the Pegasus 35 and the 36 and all the others that came before it. It's a great midsole foam, so I'm glad to see that they're reintroducing it. Price is a bit of a mystery also over on the Indonesian Nike website. If you convert the price that's there, you get 73 Earth credits UK. Seems a bit low to me. I reckon it would perhaps be a little bit higher than that, considering that, you know, we live in tax land. Beast! You know what they say, never work with children or animals, and I work with both of those on a regular basis. Let's hope that this best of Nike Tech shoe is more a Beatles best of than a KTEL Ross Abbott collection. I think with the Vomero 16 incoming, I'm probably gonna say that this one's a nay for the time being until I can find out a little bit more about the shoe. This one's coming in black vault and photon dust. Can anyone confirm about the photon dust color here? Has anyone seen any photon dust? If you have, let me know down in the comments. Shoe three is the Zoom Fly 4. Now I have featured this on a previous yay or nay. I think we're getting a little bit closer to its release now. We've got some proper images, which seem to be official ones from Nike itself. Certainly looks like it's a return to the Flyknit upper that we all liked from the second version of the shoe. And I actually quite like the lemon color of the upper. I really like that. I mean, it'll stay that color in my local reap for, you know, about a day. I do like the red hits on the lateral and medial side of the shoe. And there's a more subtle, larger swoosh 
that swings through into the tow box area. And a lacing loop system actually that looks quite similar to the Zoom Streak 7 that I've been enjoying recently. The midfoot wrap though does look an awful lot like the Zoom Fly 3, don't you agree? And so does the tongue and the ankle collar. My spidey sense is tingling. I think I will leave this one up to the viewers as to whether I review it at some point. There will be a poll up soon about that over on the community section of the channel. You need to be a subscriber I think to actually find that community section so please make sure you subscribe. React just seems outdated a little bit to me. There's been a lot going on over the last couple of years in terms of midsole foams and the other brands have caught up a little bit. I think Nike are missing a trick here. Imagine if you had Zoom X in this one, but with a nylon plate rather than a carbon plate. Oh yeah. Just imagine that. I can't see this one beating the Zoom Fly Flyknit, which was my favourite, a bit of a classic. What's your take on this refresh of the original Vaporfly training partner? It's a nay for me at this point. But I will do a poll one. I'll pick it up. Perhaps like I did with the Boston 10. You know how much I like that one. And my ankle still hurts. I've managed to make it to shoe four without passing out due to the heat. I really need to upgrade my lighting, get some LED lighting. I think that will help with the heat a little bit as it's punishing right now. I've run races where I haven't been this hot. Shoe four is the Mizuno Wave Prophecy X. I mean, where do you start with this one? First of all, it's 209 Earth Credits UK. Not for the light of wallet or the light of Earth Credits. It says it's aimed at endurance long runs, this one. And it's got a special air mesh upper. I could do with one of those right now. Mizuno do suggest that this shoe is aimed at heel impact protection. And I've got to say, this shoe appears as close to a trampoline as I've seen in any other running shoe. I think there's two plates in the midsole, somewhere or another, maybe on the top, on the bottom and they create like a sort of bellows type situation. There's one on the upper section of the midsole and then one sort of lower down towards the outsole, I think. This shoe sure looks close to the recently released Nike Air Max Pre-Day and also the forthcoming Air Max 2021, but without the big air-filled bag, obviously. I think this one's probably only going to be for the mega Mizuno fans and as such, it's not a shoe that I'm willing to shell out on. It seems more an attempt at like a designer casual shoe really that's got some running leanings. I'm not sure anyone's gonna rock up and race in this one. I could be proved wrong, and I like being proved wrong, but I don't see it happening. Who knows, maybe it could be supremely cushioned. Maybe it could be the Alpha Fly Beta that we've all been waiting for, but I think not. It just looks like a trampoline attached to a football boot upper to me. And as such, it's a nay for this one. I think that's four nays in a row today. So there we go. What do you make of these four today, guys? Let me know your thoughts and opinions on each of these shoes down in the comments. A very quick musical interlude for you. I've managed to refresh myself by leaping into a bath of ice. I haven't really, I just had a drink of water, but seemed a bit more exciting. Today's musical interlude comes courtesy of Neil Young and Crazy Horse, their album Sleeps With Angels. This one was released in 1994, but for me it has a very special connection to round about this period 20 years ago. I can remember coming back from uni and the conditions being very similar actually, there was a real heat wave going on. And I spent most of the summer creating an acoustic EP of some of my own tracks. The first time I'd ever done that really. I had a lot of fun doing that and I remember listening to this album pretty much exclusively around that time. There's some great tack piano tracks on here that I really enjoy. My Heart and A Dream That Can Last kind of bookend the album and they're both really beautiful songs. Change Your Mind and Trans Am are two of my favourites on this album. Big long jam out tunes. Certainly Change Your Mind goes on for a long time but it's wonderful, it kind of weaves in and out. There's some really interesting lyrics and some great guitar work and also the rest of the backing band behind him provide that solid and consistent sort of backing so that Neil Young's guitar can sort of stand out there. Absolutely worth checking out this one, Sleeps With Angels by Neil Young and Crazy Horse. It's time for me to drink another couple of pints of water. Thanks for tuning in guys and sticking with me to the very end of today's video. If you haven't done so already, it really does help the channel out if you hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications when I launch those new videos for you. You can also help the channel out by grabbing some merch from the links below and also giving this video a thumbs up like. My name's Ed Bud and I'll be seeing you.